Hi fellow birdies, and welcome back to another edition of Mr. Songbird's Writing Mukbang. In today's video, I'll be going over eight tips for how to, and tricks for starting your story. Now, tip, tip number one, when you get started, there's be, every so often there'll be this little voice in your head that says, you know what, I probably should edit that thing. It should, maybe you should have pizza, I should have burgers. And maybe I should describe the you know, color more. Take that voice and shove it in the basement. Lock it up. Because that you know, voice is a, listening to it's a ticket to basically spending three hours you know, re-editing the same 10 paragraphs before finally scrapping it all in frustration. Not that I've ever done that myself. Oh no. <laughs> now, for tip number two, make sure, well, let me say, I personally recommend having an outline. It's a basic one, it's a short one, like it was just for the first few scenes. Just so you kind of have an idea of where you are and where you're going. I've done stories like that myself, and where I don't have it. And usually it didn't turn out as well, frankly. Just having that little bit, yeah. So that you at least know where the next scene is going to take you can really help. Although, you know, don't be afraid to like change it up if like inspiration strikes or, you know, you realize, wait a minute, if I put that here, it makes no sense for, you know, there. And by, for my meal today, I'm having mac and cheese lasagna with you know, garlic bread. Speaking of concern, this mac and cheese lasagna. Mm, definitely cheesy. Mm -hmm. Not a bad little dish. A lot of beef there. Now, as far as actually starting the story goes, here's my recommendation. Make it bad, and start it bad. Like, or rather, everything I'm saying about don't worry about quality, this especially applies here. Like, feel free to spend like three paragraphs describing your main character. Use the words, once upon a time, or a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, in an unironic manner. Because here's a secret. Generally speaking, you're going to find the right words to start the story, not in the first draft, but the later drafts. Like, when I wrote the first book, Path of the Magi, the f entire first chapter, I didn't actually start until, like, pretty the final editing phases. Because we realized that it really needed a little bit of a prologue to get ideas uh, for the characters. So like I said, feel free to start it bad. Like, if you need to, start writing gibberish. And then continue with, you know, whatever's going to happen in that scene. Understand, of course, that you're probably going to be scrapping, you know, most, if not all, of, you know, the first few paragraphs. I mean, just remember that 
something bad that's written is going to be better off than something that's, you know, fantastic but always stuck in your head. Uh, fourth, number tip, uh, fourth tip, just keep pushing forward. Again, some, and basically the more words you write, the faster you write, the further you push ahead, the better. Like, it's okay to have a lot of mistakes. Because, you know, this is the rough draft. An emphasis on rough. Because you're never going to want to show it to anyone until you become like a multi-billionaire and they see how bad it was originally. Now, on that note, in the rough draft, speed is essential. Like, especially in the rough draft. It's good everywhere else, but in the rough draft, writing faster is a, you know, huge advantage because the further you get in, the more you have, you know, finished. And, like, you're probably scrapping, like, at some, like, maybe like a third of it, you know, straight up and editing the rest. And so having that third be... Um, having like what's left be like twenty thousand words instead of like five thousand words will really help. So my way, consistent writing is very important. Like, although that said, writing is you know a couple of factors. There. One. Even if you stop at some point, you can always come back to it. Although it'll be out of practice, you know, you might not remember half of it. But like, for example, Path of Magi, I think that in like 2011, I gave up on it. 2013, I came back to it. They're like a very, you know, poor version, honestly. That is like, just like 10,000 words. You know, 15,000 words, discovered that, had to turn to a full-length novel, did so. And then finally in 2020, I published the you know, corrected version. Point of that long-winded little you know, story. You can, you know, very easily come back and continue writing your story. That said, if you want to, you know, push forward and, like, really get it done, you need to keep writing. That said, Let's say you, you know, run into writer's block, which comes in multiple flavors. For example, maybe you genuinely hate writing the scene you're on. Simple, you know, five minute you know, solution. Do a you know, summary of what is going to happen in that scene and go to the next scene. Now I do think number six. And also on that note, let's say that, and this also happens, you don't know where to go from this scene. My advice, just, you know, write some description. You know, like, and feel free to, like, skip around to a different section. So, like, maybe you don't know how, to, and where, how this scene ends. That's fine. Skip ahead. Let's see now. And seventh tip, like, if you have to make a change, if you realize that there's something absolutely wrong that will have to go away, don't do it. Just summarize the change you want to make and write that down, and then go ahead and do something else. If 
Because again, you're gonna, like, no matter how much you edit, you're probably gonna scrap a lot of the first draft. Like that, you know, 15,000 word direct version of you know, Path of the Magi. I think I must have scrapped about 20% of those words, even though I'd edited it multiple times over. Now, the eighth tip is, you know, a little bit you know, counter to some of the other ones, but basically, now, this isn't for a given scene, but let's, uh, every so often, take a moment to take stock of where you are in the story and where you want to be going in the story. Like, see how it compares to the outline, adjust the outline, and, you know, figure out, like, okay, outline a bit further, perhaps. The nice thing about outlines is, you know, anything that you end up scrapping there is going to be a, ch a tiny portion compared to if you had actually written that whole scene out. Now, are those all the tips? Nope. There's a lot more, but, you know, they're out there, basically. They'll be on, you know, blogs in books, in videos, you know, even bad ones like this one. You'll find them in, you know, podcasts, in, in articles. Like, one tip I found that really changed how I wrote was actually just, you know, one of like a bunch of different bits on self-editing for fiction writers. But, and so definitely make sure to take some time, if you're interested in writing, to study and learn more. But the most important thing there is, and here's tip number nine. Do that, but don't do that instead of writing. Do that as well as writing. Like, don't you know, say, I'm going to do an hour of writing, and then turn that into an hour of I'm watching videos about people talking about writing. That hour should be for writing or half an hour, 30 minutes, or whatever you decide. Half an hour is 30 minutes, what am I thinking? Half an hour, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes. Even it's an eight minutes a day, that's fine, as long as you keep at it. One more. That's all the time we have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that this information proves useful to you. But make sure to click the red button down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to receive notifications, and I'll see you folks in the next video. This is Charles signing off. Bye folks.